Well, I can hear you all warming up now. I know it hasn't even been a month since I told you that one of my biggest hi-fi and home theater regrets was building a purpose-built home theater and listening room. So what am I doing? Going with a custom installation yet again. <laughs> Before we jump into today's video, I would like to thank our sponsor, Native. As I've gotten older, I've discovered that I sweat. And while we all sweat, obviously, I seem to do it more now than I did when I was younger. And being a creator with a pretty jam-packed schedule, I don't like feeling uncomfortable throughout the day, which is why I've started using Native deodorants and soaps. I love that Native is aluminum-free, goes on easy, dries quickly, and doesn't destroy my shirts in the way other deodorants have in the past. I picked up their charcoal, aloe and green tea, citrus and herbal musk, and sea salt and cedar scents, and have been really pleased with their all-day performance. I like that the scents are a little more subtle rather than coming across as straight perfume, and I appreciate Native's plastic-free packaging. While it may not look like traditional deodorant, it still applies clean and easy. I've also been checking out their line of body washes as well, and if you're a fan of thin mints, may I recommend Mint Cookie Cupcake? Seriously, check it out. Save 33% on your first native deodorant pack. Regularly $39, you're gonna get yours for $26 using the link in the description or use discount code Robinson at checkout. Thanks again to Native for sponsoring this video and now back to it. No, I haven't lost my mind and no, our new living space will not, I repeat, will not be a dedicated space, but sometimes you have to call an audible at the line and hope for the best, which is what I've done with our living room setup. If you're a fan of this channel, you know that up until this point, I have relied on upward firing speakers sitting atop either bookshelf or floor standing speakers that bounce sound off of the ceiling in order to take advantage of Dolby Atmos soundtracks. I love upward firing Atmos speakers and I consider them a cost effective way to enjoy Dolby Atmos, especially for those of you who may not be in a position to mount or install dedicated height or ceiling speakers. Upward firing speakers are fantastic so long as your ceilings aren't too high. How high is too high? Well, that depends. In my experience, upward firing or reflective Dolby Atmos speakers work best in rooms where the ceiling height doesn't exceed 12 feet. While they can work with ceilings at or near 12 feet, their effectiveness, in my experience and opinion, does start to wane a bit. If your ceiling height is anywhere between 8 and 12 feet, I would totally recommend using upward firing or reflected Atmos speakers. If a permanent installation isn't something you can do, or maybe it's something you don't even want, in our new home, the ceilings in our living room are 14 plus feet on average. I say average because our roof line is actually sloped, so our ceiling height is not consistent. It slopes upwards as you move left to right, with the right side of the room being notably higher than the left by several feet. So while upward firing drivers may have worked fine off to the left side of my room, they would have no doubt been less than effective on the right. And I had every intention of sticking with upward firing Atmos speakers, but when we toured the house for the first time after our offer was accepted, I realized that for the sake of my sanity and to curb y'all's wrath, I needed to go in a different direction, meaning permanently installed downward firing in ceiling speakers. Now, I had every intention of installing the in-ceiling speakers myself. However, upon going over the plans for the new house, I discovered a major problem. The joists were all going the wrong way, but more on that in just a moment. Now, if I was doing this in our Austin home, I could easily have gotten away with installing a single pair of forward mounted Atmos speakers to get the same 5.2.2 setup I had grown accustomed to. But after seeing just how massive this new space was, I realized that four Atmos speakers were likely in order bringing my total speaker count to 11, or a 5.2.4 home theater configuration. But then I got to thinking about how much I hate surround speakers, either mounted visibly to the wall or to stands just behind my sofa. Sure, it works, but aesthetically, it's just not my favorite. No disrespect to those of you who have no other choice. You do you and do it with pride. But if I could completely do away with any and all speakers apart from my front three and a sub or two from being visible, 
That's what I wanted for me. So after a lot of sketching in my notebook, I arrived at a solution that I thought was not only practical, but that would make our reviews that much better for those of you who aren't content with a 3.1, 5.1, or even 5.1.2 Atmos rig. My solution was to install six in-ceiling loudspeakers that would enable me the flexibility to test a variety of system setups, everything from 5.1.2 up to 7.1.2. And I purposely laid the speakers out so that the front pair would serve exclusively as Atmos speakers. The back two sets could pull double duty either as traditional surrounds in a 7.1 setup or as a second set of Atmos speakers plus a set of surrounds for a 5.1.4 configuration. But I still had a problem with the joists because in our new home, they didn't run parallel with where the speakers needed to go. They ran perpendicular, meaning I didn't have a clear channel or bay to run my speaker cable. Now, I can be pretty handy when called upon, but when it comes time to open up drywall and start drilling through potentially load-bearing joists, that's when I call the professionals. So I reached out to Creative Audio Video for help. When I told them what I wanted to do and what challenges I knew I was gonna run into, they assured me that they could do the install in such a way that damage to my drywall would be minimal and that any and all patchwork would be easily completed either by myself or by a skilled tradesperson. And it turns out I was right to hire professionals because our ceiling and the front wall look like Swiss cheese during the install. Once the guys opened up a small portion of the ceiling, they quickly realized that the builder had installed fire breaks across every single joist. This meant that access holes would have to be cut in front of every joist in order to drill through them and run the necessary in-wall speaker cable to each of the six speaker locations. As for the speakers, I thought long and hard about which in-ceiling speakers to go with because they would likely be permanent. In other words, they would be relied upon for almost all of my AV receiver reviews going forward. Now, I ended up choosing six Klipsch DS160 CDT in-ceiling speakers, which are part of Klipsch's designer series line. I chose these for a couple of reasons. One, they're relatively shallow in terms of their depth. Our, our home does not have an attic or crawl space above the living room. And because the plans surrounding this home were not, shall I say, the most clear, I had no earthly idea just how much physical space I had in my ceiling prior to cutting a hole and finding out. So best to err on the side of caution and go with a shallower in-ceiling speaker. Oh, and they're bezel-less too, meaning their overall footprint would be less noticeable compared to some other in-ceiling speakers. This series of in-ceiling speakers utilize more common driver materials in the form of polypropylene and silk, so they are more likely going to be a better material match for a wider range of third-party loudspeakers being reviewed on the channel. Because not every speaker we review is by Klipsch, I wanted to do whatever I could to ensure the best all-around sonic match. Now, if you're not a full-time reviewer and you know that you're going to stick with a single brand or style of speaker, by all means, get whatever best complements your main left, right, and center speaker, as that is going to give you the best results. But since I don't have that luxury, I opted for what I felt was the best logical compromise. Needless to say, once everything was said and done, the guys at Creative Audio Video did a great job installing the Klipsch in ceiling speakers, and my resident handyman did an equally fine job masking all of the holes, resulting in a seamless install. While I meant what I said when I told you all that I would never build a purpose-built screening or listening room, I totally believe my investment in custom installation in this case has been well worth it. While I know how to install in-ceiling and in-wall speakers after seeing how tricky our ceiling turned out to be, this was a job best left to the professionals. While every job and install, whether you do it yourself or hire someone to do it for you, is going to vary in price, the total cost of this project came in at around $2,000, which included the six speakers, all materials and labor for both our custom install team as well as the drywall repair. While you could definitely do an install such as this for less, either by going with less expensive in-ceiling speakers or by just doing the work yourself, I'm happy I hired professional help and got the peace of mind that the job was done the right way, given all of the difficulties that arose throughout the process. So that's it for me. Be sure to stay tuned to see the full reveal of this room once we're done with all of the projects that we have in store. And I'll be discussing the speaker's actual performance in more detail in that video as well.
But before we sign off, I'm curious what Christy thought of the installation process. She was right here watching the whole thing. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was pretty nervous seeing yeah. our brand new home get cut into tiny little pieces all across a 20 something foot ceiling, <laughs> wondering how that was all going to go back together like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, I am glad you hired professionals to do the job. I think mm -hmm. that that might have just been a little bit too much stress combined to moving into a new place, a new state, you know. Yeah. Well, um, people forget, though, I wasn't clear in this video. We literally moved. We got here the day before the installers arrived and and started cutting open the house. We didn't even have our furniture here. We were sleeping on like an air mattress. And it's like, welcome to your new home that has taken over a year to get. And now let's start cutting into it. Yeah, I was not excited about that, not going to lie. And I definitely, after going through all of this, see the benefit of just going with wireless everything. Mm. Uh, but I agree with you. I'm not a fan of having to have rear speakers uh, on stands. And mm -hmm. I think the upper, upward firing at most speakers, while they work great when you, you, know, you mount them on top of a set of traditional speakers, mm -hmm. they're hideous. Yeah, they're not the best looking. The best thing that we've seen, um, I think it was, was it Focal that did the built-in? Yeah, Focal and Klipsch both have yeah. uh, speakers, variations of the 8000F and Focal's 826D have the Atmos, the upward firing Atmos drivers built into the tower speaker cabinet. And that by far is the best way um, of going about it because otherwise you do you kind of have like a triangular wedge that sits right on top of your speaker now There's no uniformity and yeah. so they look like this sort of growth on top <laughs> of the speaker Anyway, yeah. that to me just is annoying what I don't love oh. about the in ceiling treatment mm -hmm. is and I'm just saying this because if if you're watching you may not even be considering this I know I didn't I mean I know we, I knew we were doing the Klipsch mm -hmm. speakers and they are, they are very clean in terms of the installation and like how they f sit flush against the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Now our, our walls and our ceiling are currently painted some shade of white, right? Mm -hmm. The speaker grill is, it's supposed to be white, mm -hmm. I believe, mm -hmm. but it reads more gray. It's a, it's definitely more of a cooler tone. So it, yeah, it, I, I, you can see them in the ceiling. Whereas if they could be painted or something or could, if there was more of an option to color match your ceiling color, I think that that would earn major style points from an aesthetic perspective. Well, yeah. And, and, and I will say that we haven't done anything with the clips in ceiling speakers yet. So out of the box, they are more of a bright, crisp, cool white. And our, and our walls have just a, have like a, just a slight tint of warm, warmth to the white. So they aren't a perfect aesthetic match, but these clip speakers, like a lot of um, in-wall and in-ceiling speakers, can be painted. You can paint them any color that you want. Um, they have to be painted using a spray gun. Um, that's going to put a light enough coat so that they remain acoustically transparent. But if, say, we had gray ceilings and we still had a bucket of the gray paint or even the white paint that we have, I could go out in the garage, load up a spray gun, and better match the grills to the ceiling. We just We just haven't done that yet. Well, speaking of paint, mm -hmm. I think one other thing that's worth noting, mm -hmm. especially if you run to, run into a situation like we did where we had to cut so many holes along the wall and the mm -hmm. ceiling. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the guy that did our drywall repair work did a really good job making everything look as seamless as possible. Mm -hmm. We had, thankfully, thankfully, <laughs> whoever did the remodel of this house before we bought it left a bucket of paint. A lot of paint in the garage. Mm -hmm. So we had that handy, which was really, really nice. But even he's told us like he could not guarantee that the, the yeah. paint would be matched perfectly, perfectly yeah. even though it might be the same paint on the wall, because when it's painted at different times, there could be uh, discrepancies in terms of color. So the reason I bring this up is if you're considering doing a project like this, and obviously if you are working from scratch and you're, it's a new build, then this mm -hmm. is going to be a lot easier for you. 
But if you're not, and you end up having to do a lot of cuts into the ceiling or the walls, you might consider repainting the entire room. Yes. Once, once you've got your holes cut. If you are a very particular person, as I am, I'm very particular. <laughs> I notice everything. And mm -hmm. if, if I'm standing in one spot, it may look great. If you move to a different position, it shifts a little, yeah. you know, but depending on the lighting, yeah. you may notice like a large square around your, your, where your speaker is now in the ceiling. And yeah. for some people, that may make a difference to you. So anyway, that's all. That's all. I just think, I just think it's important because especially yeah. if you're, if, if you're watching this video with a significant other mm -hmm. and they, you may be trying to convince them like to go down this road. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing all of the potential pitfalls, pitfalls that you may run into sure. is always better than being surprised on the day of when it's maybe too late to turn back. Oh, and I would totally, if you're, if, if you're sitting down with your husband or wife thinking about doing this type of a project, I would go into it with absolute worst case scenario mindset. Because especially if your house is older, you have no idea what you're going to find in the walls or a ceiling like we did. And so don't undersell a project like this. Like, oh yeah, we can punch one hole and do everything. A, the likelihood that that's true in any home, even a new build, is probably slim to none. Let's just be honest. But if you go with, hey, there's going to be a lot of holes and it's going to look like a disaster and it's going to be way worse before it gets better, you're probably going to have an easier time um, adjusting if you're in the house when this project is going on, like not freaking out and letting it go all the way through to fruition. Because had the installer said, we could do this in two holes. And then when there were like 18, um, there's a very real chance, like halfway into the project, myself or Christy or both of us could be like, whoa, wait a minute. What the hell is this? Seal it up, get out. But everyone was very upfront with each other in terms of we're going to do our best, but we don't know what we're going to see. And based on the, the rough plans that we were given when we bought this house, they didn't line up to anything. So I don't know who drew those blueprints, but they are not ultimately what they built. That's a whole other story. Anyway, that those are our kind of tips about if you're looking to tackle a project such as this, just keep those kind of things in mind. Anything else? No, can't wait to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even there yet. I haven't even plugged them in yet. Uh, so anyway, that's it for us today and today's video. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And my question of the day for you, maybe you saw this one coming, maybe you didn't. And that is, once everything is said and done, do you think I'm going to experience a dramatic difference between these dedicated Atmos speakers over my old upward firing or reflective ones. Um, maybe you've tried upward firing and gone with dedicated later. Tell me, what what did you experience? Because I really am curious. I've always relied on the reflective Atmos speakers, so this is gonna be really fun for me. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you guys continue to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. Also, huge thanks to Native for sponsoring this video. Again, to save money on your first Native order, either click the link in the description or use coupon code ROBINSON at checkout. You're going to save quite a bit of money. So thank you to Native. Um, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for me today or us today. Uh, so remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.